Good evening. It's nice to see you all here today. My name is Yasuko Uchida. I'm director of the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. The Japan Foundation Los Angeles opened its door in 1983. We promote international awareness and mutual understanding between Japan and the US through a wide range of programs and grants aimed at supporting Japanese language education and presenting arts and cultural exchange program. Today, we are very proud to present our exhibition, Nobuo Anzai, homage to a nomadic storyteller. The exhibition was originally scheduled to open to the public in March 2020 in the gallery space of the Japan Foundation Los Angeles. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was postponed for a year. Currently, we are very excited and delighted to be able to virtually showcase late Nobuo Anzai's retrospective exhibition and welcome visitors, not only from LA, but also from all over the world. When I first encountered his painting, I was captivated with his pieces, which were filled with people selling and farming, playing at seasonal festival, praying at dinner, and even satirizing greedy politicians. These pieces show that he loved ordinary people and their lives, regardless of place. They have comforted me put me at ease and make me feel connected with people. They are painting that can be shared with people during these hard times where people are forced to separate. Now, pre uh, please let me introduce Mr. Keo Griffith, who has curated this exhibition. He is an interdisciplinary artist, independent curator, an arts writer working across themes of social issues, geopolitics, and migrating cultures through multimedia, contemporary crafts, and technology-based works. He has exhibited internationally in the UK, Japan, Germany, Croatia, China, Hong Kong, and so forth. Previously, the Japan Foundation Los Angeles has collaborated with him three times, which includes Nobuo Anzai's previous exhibition in 2018, as well as Chromatic Passage, Neo-Japonism, Shunga in 2016. Now, uh, I will be passing the conversation to Mr. Griffith for the opening event. He will be giving a talk about Anzai's work and his life with his daughter, Miss Mikoto Anzai. So please enjoy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction, Director Uchida. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it is my great pleasure uh, to be able to present this uh, very comprehensive body of work by the late artist Nobu Anzai. Um, without the support of the Japan Foundation, this wouldn't have been possible for uh, another round. Um, Nobu Anzai was a self-taught painter, fearless and, and adventurous practitioner who let his intuition guide him, avoided any formalist ideas, and kept his mind wide open and adapted to new ideas. From his explorative, youthful years right after the Pacific War, he emigrated to South America, uh, learned to farm, apprenticed to become a sushi chef, and migrated further on to Colombia, Spain, and finally settled in Los Angeles. His life has been nomadic, free-spirited, and deeply observant of how the world transforms around him. Novo's paintings are documentations of the communities he has lived in. Working daily as a food preparer, he knew the street vendors by their name, the food products by their appearance and character. 
and the matters of life that depended on their existence. Nobu would look further into his subject, subjects to find unique characteristics and humor embedded within. His migratory life demonstrates one that defies boundaries of culture or nationality. He was a master of integrating nostalgic folk tropes from his upbringing in Fukushima with a vibrant palette of Latin America and Spain. As Director uh, Richias mentioned earlier, this exhibition was originally scheduled for March 2020, uh, exactly a year ago, um, in the exhibition hall of the Japan Foundation, Los Angeles. Uh, that time last year, the world saw the beginning of the pandemic, not knowing how long it will persist. Since then, we have learned to work in a transitioning virtual environment, which has incidentally affected us to self-reflect, meditate on domestic matters, and become closer to families. Novo Anzai's exhibition has also been modified to be presented on a virtual platform. We hope that this virtuality would evoke a sense of intimacy with each painting that you could enjoy from the comfort of your home. Uh, now I would like to invite Mikoto Anzai to join me in the dialogue to reflect on Nobo, Nobo's life as an artist and father. But before I do that, I'd like to um, <clears throat> extend my gratitude to some important friends and supporters who were very um, instrumental in bringing together Nobo Anzai's exhibition to the state. Uh, and this is only to name a few. I'm, I'm sure I missed some people, so forgive me if I did. Uh, Shinichi Ono, Mikasoma Ono, Jun Hiraoka, Tsuneo Azuma, former di Deputy di Director Tomoki Sakuta, and former Director Hideki Hara, the Japanese Actors Community in Los Angeles, Balcony Coffee Company, and Rooms Cafe. Without further ado, I would like to bring Mikoto onto screen. Well, thank you, uh, Kiyo-san. And uh, thank you uh, to uh, Suzuki-san as well for the warm uh, welcome. Also to the entire staff of the Japan Foundation Los Angeles for hosting this wonderful event, uh, the opening of the virtual uh, exhibition uh, titled Homage to a Nomadic Storyteller. Uh, showcasing uh, the artwork of my father, Nobuo Anzai. And uh, I hope that this conversation that we have today, uh, a casual conversation, it, it gives you a little insight on the background uh, of uh, the passion that my father had towards painting, as well as some little background of his life that had a great impact on all his artwork, as well as some stories behind it. So uh, without further ado, I will start kyo -san with a question to you. Uh, you and my father uh, were very, became very good friends. Uh, you had a very strong bond and a deep relationship. So maybe um, if you could share with us um, when and how you met him and what about him at least that caught your attention. Okay, let me bring up the image of your father so that we can see how he, what he looks like first and then I'll continue. Okay. So um, my earliest memory, <laughs> which is kind of strange, um, was about 20 years ago when I used, I still work as a graphic designer, um, but I first started working for a label on Sato Boulevard. And the, my colleagues uh, would take me to this place called Sato Tempera House, which is up the street where your father and mother worked. Uh, it was their shop. And I was very touched by your parents' generosity and friendliness. Um, they would go out there of their way to make sure that we were eating plenty enough and well. Um, they would throw in an ex extra boiled egg or um, extra rice or even give us free food sometimes. Uh, it's quite um, amazing, I think. Uh, and also since then, I know that they were in business for over um, three decades. And uh, one thing I noticed is, is that they never raised the price that much uh, significantly. It still stayed around 600 yen or 700 yen or something, um, which is, which always made me thoughts uh, how, how they could stay in business in 20, you know, in 2019. Um, <clears throat> so on one occasion, I was there on my own and I was paying for my 
uh, lunch, and I notice in the background, behind the cash register is a small display monitor that rotated uh, this artwork. And it was modest and quiet and, and unnoticeable, but it would keep changing images like a signal, like a lighthouse in the distance. And it was calling, asking me to please see this work. And that's how I discovered uh, that your father was the painter of these, this work. And when I asked him about it, he would finally bring out uh, these huge books, uh, portfolios, which are photographs of the work. And through that, I got acquainted with his work. Um, I also saw the family photographs of uh, you and your brother and your mother uh, in different settings in uh, South, South America, uh, Colombia, I guess, and especially in Spain. So um, I know you're born in Colombia, but I think probably your first earliest vivid memories are in Madrid. Uh, and I was wondering if you can share some stories about that. Sure. Um, the years that we lived in Spain, uh, we're very, uh, we have very fond memories of that as a family. Uh, we moved there when I was barely three years old and we left uh, when uh, I was 14, uh, 17, sorry. So a full 14 years that we lived there. Um, for, the, uh, for those of you who know, uh, who have gone to Spain or seen movies or documentaries or read about the country, is a country with a lot of history and a lot of artists, famous artists. And that's a very special uh, place for us. Uh, they own a restaurant uh, in Madrid. Uh, the name was Sakura. It was at the time only uh, one out of the three or four restaurants, Japanese restaurants in town. My parents worked all the time. They were never home. And uh, we lived five minutes away, walking distance. Uh, so my, my brother and I, every time we were off school, or we were not playing with our friends or doing our homework, would just walk over to the restaurant to hang out with my parents, but not necessarily with my parents. We we're hanging out with a lot of uh, extended family there, the cooks and the waiters that were the years became, became a part of the family. Uh, that's the, um, how we spend our childhood, uh, hanging out at the restaurant with my parents. But uh, specifically to, as you re it relates to his paintings, I think some of the fond memories I have with him it's um, uh, the few Sundays that he had off. He liked to go to the flea market, the open market uh, in, in, in Madrid. Um, it took place every Sunday in a very old part of the town where uh, they would close blocks and streets uh, uh, in this part and have hundreds of vendors uh, sell things. Uh, when I think sell things, I mean sell anything. Uh, name it from antique furniture to uh, vintage clothes to kitchenware, pets, uh, hundreds of vendors, food vendors selling food. Uh, it was a very eclectic, loud, uh, vibrant uh, place where um, a lot of people sold their things. It was just like a giant uh, yard sale and, and um, things didn't have a price tag, so people were bargaining uh, all the prices to try to get the cheaper price. So it was, it was a fun part, and, and I think my father uh, got a lot of ideas from that kind of very vibrant environment with a lot of uh, people, uh, from locals to visitors and tourists. And uh, over the years, he bought a lot of things from there, you know, a lot of the antique furniture that we still have at the, my parents' house are from their old uh, sewing machines, uh, record players, uh, pottery, I mean, very, very old antiques that he had. So often enough, we'll, um, we'll find uh, pieces of that objects uh, reflected on his paintings. And I think that's true not only in the life that uh, we had in Spain, but um, when he lived in Brazil, in Colombia, uh, in, in, uh, later in, in California, Los Angeles, even uh, some um, um, uh, childhood memories from Japan, all of the countries where he lived in, uh, one way or another, had a great influence on his paintings. And I believe uh, he discussed these kind of things with you, uh, Kiyo-san. So would you like to elaborate a little bit more about how the different experiences and, and, and things that uh, people that he met had influenced uh, his painting? 
Yes. Um, so um, after I became friends with him, or he allowed me to be in his life, um, I remember uh, being at your mother and father's house down on Sautel, and uh, we would be up many hours talking about paintings and, uh, and his friends in Madrid that he had uh, been influenced by. Um, so I, my image of your father is that uh, he, as, as I used for the title of this exhibition, he's like this perfect nomad, right? He, he just travels freely, um, really knows no boundary. You know, he, he just takes wherever his spirit goes. And moving from country to country, he um, lives through the transitioning cultures and languages, and he lets that just absorbs all that within his uh, um, uh, system, I guess, or, or his uh, psyche. Um, so one painting that I, I really um, uh, come back to every moment, this is a painting that uh, your dad kept on saying that he would make for years. And I think he finally got to it um, in 2018, which is uh, this one. So uh, this painting is um, <clears throat> this train that is going down the coastline of Brazil uh, during sunset. And you, this herd of animals that you see in the painting are ostriches racing the train. So when he mentioned about the story, I, I imagined that he was on this train and traveling into a horizon that never ends. And uh, on the train ride, as, as a rider on the train, he would accumulate all this information and knowledge and experience. And, and all that becomes material or ingredients into, in his paintings. So Brazil was the beginning, um, the first place that he settled at. And I think there was a lot of meditation going on here. And he's, he's you know, taking and inhaling um, all this experience. Uh, obviously, it's a much better, larger and vast landscape. Uh, the, the large farms, the clouds, uh, and the timeless coastline um, <clears throat> all uh, were an influence for him. And then when he moves to Colombia, which is one of the paintings from that period, uh, he adds community and people into his subject matter. So this is all about the human condition, social activism, uh, satiric um, commentary about politicians. Uh, and, and also he does a very deep relationship with uh, his um, coworkers and street vendors, people he buys foods from and, and learn, learn about that street culture. Uh, I think the most significant change is when he moves to uh, Spain as we were talking about Madrid. Uh, this is when he encounters uh, a lot of his fellow Japanese immigrant artists. Uh, many of them are oil, oil, oil painters. So your father is more like a watercolor painter. Uh, so he never really um, explored oil, I think, but he learned to paint like an oil painter using watercolor during this period, which is, which is quite remarkable. Um, another thing that the other artists have exposed him is the surrealist ideas and this kind of dreamlike quality that uh, enters his work during this period. And finally, uh, when he moves to Los Angeles, um, he begins with a uh, series of uh, coffee paintings. Uh, and also he continues to work in other um, subject matters like the uh, country life in, during his childhood. And this is when he uh, brings in the Japanese folk um, subject matter and fuses it with everything he learned while he lived in South America and Spain. So in other words, he's mixing and reassembling, improvising all his experience all together like a you know, like a chef would or a cook would. Um, so on this note, I want to ask you about um, if you had any more things to share about his 
any influence of his uh, friends in Madrid they can share with us? Sure. Um, of course, Madrid is the birthplace of a lot of fantastic war renowned artists. Um, and uh, Prado Museum is very well known with uh, artwork from Goya to Velasquez to Picasso. I mean, you name it. Uh, there's all kinds of wonderful artists. And that's one of the reasons why I believe my father loved living in Spain because there's so, so much history and so much uh, flavor uh, and so many different um, creative uh, uh, art pieces. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, the people that he hung out most uh, were a lot of fellow Japanese uh, artists, artists that were uh, not, uh, not, uh, not like doing it for as a hobby, but actually uh, um, painting was their profession. And there is a handful of very famous, uh, I believe they are famous in Japan as well, uh, Japanese artists that um, hung out with my father. Uh, the Japanese community was very small in Madrid. Everybody knew each other. And obviously having a restaurant is a place that was easy for people to drop by and, 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 and just spend time. And I remember him talking hours and hours with his fellow friends. Again, like you mentioned, they have very different styles. You know, he ne my father never used oil, but I think uh, they have all very open mindedness and they have a very sh uh, shared passion about uh, the, um, the, um, the creative uh, ideas that they get by living in Spain. So that's something that uh, uh, I remember as a child and, and, and they supported each other. I know my father bought a lot of their paintings and they hung in my house. And some of them are a little bit scary looking because they have a very different style. But uh, I do remember that uh, we have art pieces from a lot of his fellow uh, friends. And, and, you know, it didn't influence his paintings. And, and one thing that I, I found fascinating about my father is that um, he had a, such a wide range of styles, you know, from, like, as you probably, you probably see now, uh, is uh, from the cartoon-like um, um, drawings to uh, very, uh, re almost real, almost looked like a photograph, uh, sketches of uh, landscapes to uh, sketches of fruits and, 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 and objects. And then he had also a whole phase of very um, uh, abstract, um, uh, I don't know how to call it, uh, interesting objects flying uh, on the, on, in, in the sky kind of things. And, uh, you know, his uh, ideas came out of the nowhere all the time. He always carried a little piece of uh, stack of paper um, that he would write his ideas. So he could be anywhere. He could be at the doctor's office. So he'll be driving the car next to me and you can tell the moment he gets an idea that he'll bring his pen up and just start writing an idea, a title, a poem, whatever it was that um, he found, um, you know, it just came out of nowhere and it became later on in the paintings. So uh, I always find fascinating how different his um, uh, styles were, always to a point, almost to the point that if you told me that there was a different artist behind it, uh, yeah, I would believe it, you know? So I guess my question to you, uh, Kiyo-san, since you have, as a curator, have worked with many artists, uh, is, it, is it common for artists to have such a wide range of styles? Um, yes, I, I have worked with a lot of artists uh, being a curator and also writing about their work. Um, yes, artists are kind of like, you know, um, wild beings. Um, you know, they explore possibilities and potentials um, and, and also um, <clears throat> challenge uh, boundaries and also extremities for some people. Um, but, you know, I, I think generally there are, you know, not to categorize or anything, but uh, um, one thing I know is that there are artists who work on a single style or concept and devote their whole life towards mastering this vision and they don't veer off anywhere. So compared to that, your father is somebody who has continued interest or also very curious and, ex and wants to explore things. And that, that's why he has such a variety and he's being true to his interests. He, he, he wants to know what's out there. Um, and obviously he has traveled so much uh, and made so many friends of you know, different, from different backgrounds. Um, your father having this uh, 
vast, I will call it appetite for exploring new ways of expressing his narratives. Um, it also reflects as his, uh, his work as a professional chef and food preparer. Um, these paintings, I've, I've always felt like, you know, in some way, the arrangement, the composition, all of this is sort of like a, um, uh, like a bento box, like what he, he would sell at his shop. And I remember even, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that big, but, but plenty of food in it. And I would find maybe 20 different um, piece, pieces of food in there that he would carefully cook. Um, I think he was up from four in the morning. Is that correct? Maybe every day, every day with his About mother. Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. So, yeah, that that dedication, I just have so much respect for. Um, so that said, I, um, I'm very curious about what your mother and uh, yourself uh, uh, of his paintings. Which ones are your favorites? That's interesting. Um, I will start with my mother. Uh, my mother is someone who has watched my dad from the distance all through his life as he painted. And, and while he was, she was looked up from the distance quietly, every once in a while she would comment or provide a feedback uh, on his paintings. And uh, my father often said that uh, he found it very interesting that someone who was not an artist, um, and, um, the, the, the feedback that he received with somebody uh, that is, do not, does not paint uh, was refreshing because uh, the feedback came from somebody from a different perspective. There are times that they didn't agree. I, I, there were some arguments sometimes about some of the, the critiques that my mom and my mother gave my father, but most uh, um, often he, he did appreciate the constructive uh, feedback and he will make the adjustments and uh, independence. So um, uh, something was an uh, interesting dynamics between the two of them. Um, when I asked my mother, uh, what, which out of all the paintings, uh, which one is the one that um, she likes the most? And she didn't hesitate at all. She basically said, it's this one, it's Moonlight Over the Olive Grove. I think it's something about the stillness, uh, the quietness, uh, this deep thought, uh, something that it it's, brings calmness. And she really enjoyed this painting, uh, the colors, and it kind of reflects how my mother is, her personality. This painting was painted probably when I was around, I mean, it's like 40 years ago, a long time ago. And it's, it's painted in canvas. It almost looked like oil, but it's not. Um, uh, but um, it's, it's one that uh, she really enjoyed. Personally, I have different ones. And I think the one I like uh, most uh, in the colorful ones, I like this one is, um, I call it a cat, cat painting, but I think the title is Late Autumn. And it's part of the um, uh, catalog, the, uh, the virtual um, exhibition. Uh, I like the color, it's vibrant, the playfulness, the detail. Uh, uh, it's, I, I, it's, it's a kind of painting that makes me very happy. Uh, there is, uh, in terms of a painting that had a deep meaning uh, to me, um, it's not one that I, many people have seen. Uh, I have it at home in a safe, in a safe place, but it's a painting that uh, he did uh, the day I was born. Um, and uh, I was born on February 29th, so I'm a leap year baby. And apparently he painted this, in very, if not too big of a size, it's, uh, it's a small painting uh, on the, the night that, uh, on the day that I was, I was born. Uh, it is a, uh, it has a little bit of a surreal, abstract, uh, like a Picasso-like style. And it looks like, if you look careful, like my mother giving birth to me, but it's not that clear. And you gotta look carefully. But uh, the title uh, uh, is Lullaby and, and it has a date, February 29th. And he gave it to me on my 20th, 29th birthday. And, and I have it since then. I framed it and it's something that uh, is very dear to me and I think I'll keep for a long time, I mean forever. Um, other than that, I, I like the sketches. I really like the sketches you have shown already a few, uh, the street uh, uh, um, sketches. Um, uh, he has a very, I remember him sitting down for maybe an hour, not too long, and he was able to capture the, 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 the perspective of, of the street in such a great detail. 
and then I, he will go home and uh, fill in the details. But uh, he was very fast. Those sketches that he painted, it was unbelievable fast, really fast. And, and I, I really enjoy it. And I believe this one has a little bit of uh, the coffee uh, paint. And that's, I guess, a same way to a question to you, um, Kiyo-san. Um, uh, you know, that's something that my father did for a long time, use coffee as, uh, as a way to paint. Uh, again, a question to you is, I'm sure artists are creative and there's different uh, tools they use, but it is uh, something that, have you ever heard of other artists using something like coffee to paint? Yes, um, it, is, it is not that unusual. Uh, people do, uh, artists do use uh, other mediums, um, sometimes jam um, yeah. to, in some extreme, but uh, like, like uh, black tea, is another medium that I, I see uh, quite a bit too. But but the way your father used coffee as the medium, I think uh, it's unique to what, the way he handles it. Um, and also this coffee painting series, I think is a unique contribution to Los Angeles because it, it only happened, I think in Los Angeles only. And to make it even more specific, it's only in West LA uh, along Sato Boulevard. Uh, he used coffee, um, which is really, I think, uh, instant coffee mixed with water to, um, I think because it was more powdery and it didn't leave any uh, grounds. So that was his uh, choice. He would use them as like watercolor. And I, one thing is that I think coffee was uh, very tactile and um, uh, easily accessible. You could you could get it anywhere. So he had it at work at Sato Tempura House. He also had it at home. He would have it, you know, in the morning. Um, this portability also, um, you can see in the size of the work too, because I think these, um, again, I'm doing the scaling, but uh, some of these are hand size. Yeah. So, after learning about this a little bit more and that he did this on a daily basis, it almost felt like a journal and or even more like a documentation of uh, things that are happening around Sotel or these unknown or not non-famous sites, you know, as opposed to something in Hollywood, perhaps. And I, I, I also know that your father has that uh, sensibility too, that, you know, he is kind of anti Popular, popular culture. So um, he would make sure that uh, uh, he would capture these areas that are not known to um, the general uh, popular public. Uh, in a way, I, th I think the coffee paintings are like um, uh, snapshots. His paper, his coffee are kind of like, uh, you know, carrying around a camera, I think. Um, and also, as you said, it's very different from the other colorful paintings. I mean, obviously with the color, these are more monotone, but if you really look at the detail, uh, he is such a great draftsmanship, right? And he could do this in such a short time. Um, the other ones, the paintings from, you know, uh, South America and Spain, um, and some of the uh, ones from childhood are more free form, abstract. It doesn't really have, uh, you know, a strict perspective uh, incorporated into it, but these sketches are very tight, I think. Um, <clears throat> so one, one other thing I realize is that it's all happening up and down on South Hill Boulevard. He's commuting to work and he comes home from work to back home. And in keeping that line straight and not wandering away from it, this has also changed quite a bit in his life too. I think maybe it's because of the family or, or something else that's going on. Um, but in keeping that straight line, uh, he has made so many friends at the shop, uh, including many uh, artists and actors, actors in the Japanese community who really uh, revered and uh, had respect for him. Um, we collectively called him Taisho, uh, 
<laughs> that was his kind of nickname, the you know the so-called big brother of the communities. So um, as, as we go to the final part of the slideshow, uh, let me let me just run through some more of these samples of these coffee paintings. As you can see, uh, still life. Okay. So, which brings us to this painting now. <clears throat> so, um, as he learned about his illness, uh, but also defied it, uh, he showed tremendous strength in, in avoiding falling into the trap of depression. And we were all very uh, surprised, but also impressed and also uh, found him to be a great role model of dealing with these, um, you know, I guess tragedies would be, may not be the right word, but you know, in, in a way it is kind of like a personal tragedy, but he never really thought of it that way himself. In fact, he used this energy and turned it around and used, made it more positive. And be, in his final years, he was the, the most productive in his life as an artist. I think in 2019 alone, he produced close to 100, paint, 100 additional paintings, I thought, which is uh, quite amazing. So I, I like to go through those too. As you can see, this is uh, the one where he's uh, portraying his stomach um, at the top left. But, you know, that's a small portion of the composition here, um, arranged with the living animals, the fish, the flowers, very colorful. Um, and, you know, the, the theme becomes more light, more colorful, and more loose. You, you see less uh, outlining of the, in the paintings. Almost like an impressionist or expressionist work. And I like to um, end the slideshow on this painting here, which I think um, has a very nice uh, country feeling, but very bright. Um, oranges were also uh, a subject matter he would uh, come back to paint. So is, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I just wanted to, uh, uh, I think the way he would like to be remembered is to, uh, to be remembered as uh, someone who has such a passion for art. He was very positive. Uh, he took every life with a little sense of humor. Uh, he uh, was a very, uh, looked at the bright side of things. And that's something that I find remarkable and something to learn from. And I have, he left all this beautiful artwork behind, but uh, you know, I think what we're trying to do is to keep his legacy alive, uh, especially with the kind of support and, and interest that we have received by many. So hopefully uh, this uh, virtual uh, exhibition uh, brings more, um, uh, you know, an, um, acknowledgement and also awareness about uh, what art uh, can do uh, in our lives. And I think um, um, it's something that I uh, look forward to. I believe, um, Kiyo-san, you're gonna maybe open up? Uh, yes, uh, so at, our, at this point, yeah. right. Um, at this point, I, I'd like to open up the conversation to the audience and take some questions, if there are any. I see. Oh, okay. Um, I will look at. Uh... Okay, let me. Yeah, I may have to. May have to scroll through here. I. I um... uh... Oh, there's. I will answer one of the questions oh, that I see right here. Here's a good here. one. Uh... While you look, I'll go we ahead. Have one from Miyako. Uh... <laughs> So one of the questions is, uh, did he teach you how to paint? Um, oh, I'm not getting your audio. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, so there's, 
I, uh, interesting question. Um, no, he did not teach me how to paint. And maybe because ever since I was little, I felt like that was his thing. Although uh, he knew I liked to paint and that he will give me some uh, uh, tips every now and then. But uh, that's not something that I'm sure if I would have asked, he would have taught me. But no, it's not something that um, uh, he did, you know. But I did learn a lot by watching him. Um, let me see. Do you see any other questions? Oh, here's another question uh, from Cesar. Can we say his art belongs to a unique tendency or there's a mix we can summarize? Hmm. It's, um, That's on your area um, of oh, expertise, Kyo-san. Not, I'm not sure how to... Uh, Well, like I said earlier, um, <clears throat> he he was a master at arranging things, um, and this is all information and experience from his life, um, being a traveler and a chef and a fa father, and also. Um, one thing that um, maybe I didn't touch on is that traditions, you know, like um, festivals and uh, folk um, traditions from Japan, um, things that kind of uh, fade away or disappear, um, he, he felt were important to reintroduce into, you know, the present. And I in those Fukushima paintings, um, I think he was very successful in mixing those with the uh, aesthetics of Latin America. So you you knew kind of where you were in Japan, but then at the same time, you it made you feel like you might be in some other country. And but but the blending, the mix was not clear, which, which I really like. Uh, they're not, there's not really a boundary in that. I hope that answers your question. I, I, one thing I can share about uh, some of the times when I, we watched him paint, uh, we could hear him giggling and cracking himself up of something. And he, he just find it very funny to add that one detail on his painting. Uh, maybe to add a little piglet uh, in the middle of the form doing a backflip or something totally uh, out of the blue. And he found that to be super funny and, and we could hear him laughing as he's doing this. So uh, like Akio-san said is that um, he had no rules. I think anything could go, you know, uh, whatever inspired him. And if you look carefully in his paintings, there's so many little gems and hidden messages around especially the paintings that are very large with a lot of colors. There's little details that uh, you can find almost like, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I think it reflects a lot of the sense of humor he had and, and so forth. So it's kind of fun to, to check what else you can find on his, uh, some of his paintings. I don't know if you, um, Kiyosan, if you can see any of the questions. Yeah, um, now that you mentioned that too, uh, you know, um, the way he used uh, canned foods and the label and the insects that make comments, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all very much like a cartoon altogether. Um, and when you realize the depth that are, of the story that's in the embedded in the paintings, you, uh, you get an idea of how his world is. And, and you mentioned before that you, your father would chuckle or laugh when he painted? Yeah, he, you could hear him laughing because he thought it was so funny. The other thing he used to do is uh, the labels on the fruit, 
the little, you know, like Del Monte or little, little labels, he'll, he'll take it off and stick them on, on the wall. And he'll use those la uh, labels as a sample and it will show up in his painting. Paintings often misspelled, <laughs> but he didn't care. You know, you know, he has very interesting, uh, but yes, you're right. Uh, he liked using, I don't know, for some reason, uh, uh, cat, uh, food cans uh, open and flying across the sky. That was in one of his paintings. But yeah, he had that kind of a uh, sense of humor. Uh. Uh, let's see, do we have any other questions? Um, we have a comment um, from Florence Nishida. That's first small exhibition in Japan Foundation was so impressive. I wished to know more about him since. Uh, what a remarkable person in life. Please work hard to give his work a wider audience. He deserves to be known by more people. Um, <clears throat> well, we, we are working towards trying to get his uh, work out there. Uh, I'm actually right now, uh, Nick, coordinating with a museum in Fukushima to have work uh, shown there sometime as this COVID environment uh, gets more safer. Um, and I think maybe we have uh, a, a show, maybe a, two, a show or two that might travel uh, in Latin America uh, with the help of the Japan Foundation. There's another question that said, if you were to use a single word or phrase describing each of his painting periods, what would be for Colombia? Oh, we do have another question here. Oh. Okay, Colombia. Do, do you want to take that on? <laughs> Colombia. Colombia was, uh, and to describing one war is difficult, but I do remember a lot of his paintings in Colombia were of uh, 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 vendors, female vendors on the streets with uh, uh, large uh, women with a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables. So a lot of the street life, uh, but in the, in the, in the, um, uh, yeah, like, uh, I wouldn't say poor areas, but uh, you know the regular everyday kind of a uh, snapshot of of people surviving by selling food on, on the streets. And I think I don't know if that was a statement that he was making, or maybe where he lived. Uh, um, I was a baby, or that was prior to me uh, being there, so I don't remember. But um, I think it it may be a neighborhood that he lived in. But I think that's something that he, he, he I think he had a great impact on, on him. Um, yeah, it's hard to describe uh, 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 in one word, because I think he went through different phases, like in Spain. Um, but he was inspired by different events that happened uh, throughout times. And like I said, um, he, he would get ideas out of the blue, perhaps something that he saw or even driving often, you know, he would see somebody on the street and he would just, you can tell when the, 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 his mind is going um, because he's just thinking. And so it's, it's, it's hard to describe in one word, but definitely he has distinct periods with different styles throughout his life. And um, yeah, I think he was a um, great introduction to the exhibition. And thank you all for um, coming to this event. Um, please check our website um, to the, uh, for the link to the um, the virtual ex exhibition. So yeah, um, thank you again for um, um, coming to this event. Uh, I guess uh, that'll be all for the day. So have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you very much.